What's 9 plus 10? 21. Howdy friends, today we're going to be exploring neural networks and how to create a bot which can complete basic arithmetic to impress your friends and family. Here's some background footage of the AI that we'll be creating in this video. Notice that the AI first starts off getting lots of wrong answers. This is intentional as we are asking the AI to collect information about the math problem, such as the two numbers that are being used and their outputs. Upon creation, neural networks are not smart and are generally chaotic with random actions. Once when we have a large portion of information, we can then train the AI on this data so that we have a model which exceeds at the given task. 39 out of 40 questions answered correctly once trained is incredible. I may be good at math, but I'm not good and quick. Let's now discuss a little more about what this AI is. This AI is a neural network. A neural network is a type of machine learning algorithm that is inspired by the structure and functions of the human brain. Like the brain, a neural network is composed of interconnected nodes and neurons which process and transmit information. Neural networks are capable of learning and recognizing patterns in data, making them well suited for a wide range of applications, from image recognition and natural language processing to self-driving cars and personal recommendations. One of the key advantages of a neural network is their ability to learn and improve over time. This is achieved through the process known as backpropagation, where the algorithm adjusts its weights and biases of the neurons based on the error between the predicted output and the actual output. Let's now dive into the code. If you get lost during the tutorial, the GitHub link can be found in the comments and descriptions below. Firstly, this project contains two dependencies, NumPy for ease of list manipulation and Selenium for web automation interaction. To properly set up your environment, please follow the terminal command shown on screen now. Next, we'll need to set up a live server for our web app to run on. A good Visual Studio's extension that you can use is Live Server by Rickwick Dev. Click on Extensions, Search, Live Server, and then install the live server. Once installed, we can return back to our code, click on index.html, and then right-click on the file. When we right-click on the file, we should now see Open with Live Server. Congrats! Now our web app should be running on the local host, now that everything's all set up, let's begin with the neural network. To start, we'll need to import NumPy as NP, as well as the time. We'll then create a class called activation function, which will take in two callables, an activation function, as well as its derivative. Next, we'll want to create a neural network. This will require an input size, an output size, hidden layers, an activation function, and a random seed. The hidden layers is going to be a list of integers. This means that if I am to add 4 into the list, I will now have a hidden layer of 1 with 4 nodes. Next, if I am to add 2 to that list, I will have created a second hidden layer with 2 nodes. When we set np.random.seed to be the seed that we've ingested, this allows for everything that I show you for you to also be able to replicate. Finally, let's add now our weights and biases. The weights are going to be a 2D array, and the biases are going to be a 1D array. We'll iterate over our hidden layers, and for each hidden layer, we'll want to create a weight and bias for it. If we have this example of a hidden layer of 3, an input of 2, and an output of 1, we would want to create the following 2D arrays. 2, 3, 3, 1. This 2 is reference to the input, this 1 is reference to the output, and this 3 is reference to that hidden layer. Notice how the end of the first array must be the beginning of the next array. For our biases, we are only going to be needing the 1D array, which will be the size of the layer. This is because after the dot product is taken between the input and its hidden, or its hidden and its output, we'll then be adding those biases in, and they will only need to be the matching size of what the dot product will yield. After we've iterated through all of our hidden layers, we'll now want to apply the same logic, but with our current layer that we left off with and our output. Let's now take a look at forward propagation. Forward propagation is what neural networks use to predict data. In forward propagating, we'll require input data, which will be a NumPy array, and a Boolean field called isTraining. When isTraining is set to false, we'll be returning a NumPy array, and when it is set to true, we'll be returning a list of NumPy arrays. To perform forward propagation, we'll zip together our biases and weights, and we'll iterate over their nested values in a for loop. We'll then assign the input data to be equal to the activation function 
of the dot product between the input data and the weights plus the bias. Congrats, you've now performed forward propagation. As you may notice, we've recycled the input data variable. This is because in forward propagation, we are sending the data forward and we will keep sending this input data and its new prediction until we've reached the end of our DNN. Now that we have gone forward, it is time to go backwards. Backwards propagation is a way that we can update the weights and biases to make sure that our forward propagation is more accurate. To perform backwards propagation, we'll first need input data, predictions, target output, and a learning rate. Backwards propagation works off of a loss function. In this case, the loss function is our target minus our prediction squared. We can then take the derivative of this loss function to give us our error. Our error now is 2 times the target output minus our prediction. With this error, we can get the derivative by taking our error and multiplying it by our activation function's derivative of the target output. Congrats, now you understand backpropagation. What we can do is we can apply this over and over and over, similar to how we applied forward propagation. So, we first find our error, then we find the derivative of our error, we find now the new delta for the weight, and then we take that derivative of the error and the weight that we are going to update, and we can now find the new error for the layer previous. We can then find the derivative of that and continue onwards and onwards until we get to the front of our DNN. All of this logic that we see here can be simply wrote with the following code. What we'll do is we'll take our predictions and iterate through them backwards. This is because we are starting at the end and we need to constantly update all of the layers previous until we reach the very start of our neural network. Finally, we have a training function. The training function is going to use the two functions we created before. We will require training inputs, training outputs, an epic, and finally a learning rate. We'll iterate over our epics, and we will take the training inputs and feed them into our forward propagation to figure out our predictions, and then we will take our predictions and feed them into our backwards propagation to correct our neural networks. Congratulations, you've now developed a neural network using Python. Those of you with a keen memory may feel like we are missing something, and you would be correct. While we discussed neural networks, we did not discuss activation functions. On the screen, you could see leaky ReLU, ReLU, and Sigmoid. There are many more, such as TanH, but these three are very popular. Leaky ReLU has a function of x for x greater than 0 and x times alpha for x less than 0. This allows for a very simple derivative of either 1 or alpha. ReLU is very similar to the leaky ReLU, but has x for x greater than 0 or 0 for x less than 0 giving a very simple derivative of either 1 or 0. Sigmoid has a more complex function and kind of looks like a snake. The sigmoid function is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. While this may sound very complex, this allows for a very simple derivative of sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. For those of you who go to my GitHub, there's a very special treat where I talk about why the expected outputs that we get all make sense. Sadly, there is not enough time in this video for me to cover all of this in great detail. However, feel free to pause along the way if you see anything that catches your eye. Now, let's create the web scraper. To create the web scraper, we are going to need to import time, import numpy as np, and then the following imports are just for typecasting, such as tuple, web driver, and the neural network that we worked on. The web scraper is going to require a URL and a driver as well as the naming convention for xpath. Finally, we have coded a few magic variables which point to the xpath elements. In case you're not familiar on how to grab an xpath element, you can go to your web page, right-click on a value, click Inspect Element, and then right-click on the Inspect Element tab, go down to Copy, and select Copy xpath. Now, when you go over to your code, you can print your xpath. Now, let's take a look at our hidden function, collect data. Collect data is going to take in a size, a data input screaming, a data output screaming, and a sleep. 
Collect data will then also return a tuple of two lists. These are going to be our data inputs and our data outputs. You may be wondering, what do we need the grooming functions for? Well, this is because artificial intelligence is more artificial than intelligent, and sometimes it requires a little bit of help from humans. Scrolling down, we see that the operation that we are going to perform is we are going to be looking for the math question, we'll then be tokenizing the math question. Then we'll be looking for the text box to submit our answer, and we'll be adding in bad answer that we know will always fail. Finally, we'll find the submit button, and then we'll click on the submit button. This should now prompt the wrong answer as well with what the right answer should be. We'll then copy that correct answer and we'll be able to store now our math question which is tokenized as well as its correct answer. We'll do this a size amount of times before returning the data inputs and the data outputs. Let's take a look at our next hidden function called answer questions. Answer questions is going to be very similar to collect data, however now we will be passing through a neural network, around answers, and an operation. As we can see, the code starts off very similar, where we'll be looking for a math question as well as tokenizing the math question. Next, we'll be forward propagating with our neural network the tokenized data, and then we'll take the prediction that our neural network gave and we'll round it to the nth digit that we passed in for the round answer. Now when we interact with the text box, we'll be giving it the neural network's answer. And finally, we'll be hitting the submit button. This time, answer can be either correct or incorrect. We want to be looking for when the answer is correct so we can make sure to increase our success count by one. Finally, just to help out the user so we can see where our neural network is going because this will go very fast, we want to print out the tokenized math question the operation that's being performed, the tokenized math question, and the answer that our network gave. Once when everything is done, we'll return the success count. Our final hidden function is click operation button. Click operation button is going to be used to click on the addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division button so we can make sure that the data we collect or answer is correct. For the get addition, it will be very similar to the collect data. We'll be taking in the exact same inputs and returning out the same output. The only difference is we'll make sure to click the operation button and then call collect data. Subtraction is built the exact same, except instead of the self addition button next path, it's now the self subtraction button next path. Multiplication as well, and same with division. Just as collect data had four functions, answer questions will have four functions. We'll be accepting the same inputs and producing the same outputs as the hidden function answer questions. However, we'll be sure to now click the correct operation button before starting the function. Now, let's take everything that we learned in this video and all put it together in our main. We'll be wanting to import in our neural network, our web scraper, NumPy as NP, the Selenium web driver, and the by from Selenium. We have two global variables called question pulled and question answered, which will help us collect the data and answer the questions. We have a function which is called get user math selection, which will get which operation the user wants to solve with the DNN. Finally, we have four functions for each operation which will solve the DNN. They will all take in the web scraper, the amount of questions to pull, and the amount of questions to answer. They will all create a neural network of input size 2, output size 1, with the leaky ReLU activation function and a random seed of 1. The data inputs and data outputs are now collected from the webbot, and then we train our neural network on the inputs and outputs collected. Finally, we will answer all the questions, and then we will print out our results. Altogether, we can see that in our main, our code looks like this. The URL that I am using is my local host. Depending on how you deploy the server, you may have a different local host. Thank you for coding along with me. I hope you all have a lovely day. Cheers!